Today we're going to take a look at another application of integrals, and that is answering the question of how do we find the center of mass. The idea here is kind of like a teeter-totter. If you want it to balance perfectly, or maybe spinning plates would be a better example. If you want it to balance perfectly, where is the center of the mass that will balance perfectly on a point? We're going to start by looking at the simplified one-dimensional option. First, looking at the discrete situation. Discrete basically meaning we've just got points on the x-axis. And the way we find the center of balance with a bunch of points is first we need to identify the mass. The entire mass, what we'll do is we will sum or add up all the individual values of the mass. And that calculates our total mass. To find the center of that mass, we're going to find m sub y, which is going to represent the moment away from the y-axis. M sub y, the distance from the y-axis, that moment from the y-axis is the sum of the product of the individual masses times the individual x values. And that will give us the moment. And then to actually calculate the point where the center of balance is, we will take the moment function and divide by the mass function. So we have three equations here to help us build the center of mass, with the key one being at the end when we divide the two pieces. So in two dimensions, we'll first find, I'm sorry, in one dimension, we'll first find the total mass, then we'll find the total moment away from the y-axis. And then we'll find that x bar, that center of mass, by dividing those values. So for example, if I put my first mass of 12 kilograms at x equals negative 4, my second mass of 12 kilograms at x equals 4, and this is in meters, and my third mass has 30 kilograms. And I put it at, we should be numbering these x's, 1, 2, and 3. We put it at x equals 2 meters. And we put our fourth mass of 6 kilograms. And we put it at x4 equals negative 4 meters. We want to know where to put the center of balance so that this balances out perfectly. First, we'll calculate the total mass. We find the total mass by finding the sum of the individual masses, which is 12 plus 12 plus 30 plus 6. And so that's going to come out to 60 kilograms for our total mass. Next, we'll find the moment function for the y, which is the sum of the mass times the x value. Notice we multiply by the opposite coordinate from what the moment asks for. It's the moment of y. We're going to multiply by the x. So we'll do 12 times the first x of negative 4 plus the second mass, 12, times the second x of 4 plus 30, the next mass, times its location, 2, plus 6 times negative 4, multiplying the mass times the location. And when we add all that up, we get 24 kilogram meters. And now to find the center of balance, x bar, we just have to divide your my, 24, by your m of 60. 
And when we reduce that, we'll find out that it is 2 fifths of a meter away from the origin will cause this situation to balance perfectly. So that's one dimensional discrete with our mass, moment, and center function. But what if it's not discrete? What if it is continuous? With continuous, we'll see some type of row function that represents the mass over that continuity. Well, similarly, we'll first calculate the mass, which is going to be the sum of all of the masses along our interval. Well, that would just be the integral from a to b of the row dx. We'll also find the moment function in the y direction. And just as before, we took the x's times the mass. We're going to also take the x's times the mass function and integrate it from a to b to get all of our individual moments added together. And then to find our center, x bar, we simply will take that moment and divide by the mass like before. Again, our goal is that x bar, but all three of these help us get there. So let's try a continuous example where we have to calculate where is the center of balance. Let's say rho is going to be equal to x cubed on the x interval from 0 to 3, and we want to know where this is going to balance. Well, first we'll calculate the total mass, which is the integral from 0 to 3 of our function, x cubed dx, which is x to the fourth divided by 4 integrated from 0 to 3. And if we plug 3 in, we get 81 over 4 minus 0. So our total mass is 81 fourths kilograms. Our moments away from the y-axis, that's going to be the integral from 0 to 3 of x times our function, x cubed dx, or the integral from 0 to 3 of x to the fourth dx, which is x to the fifth divided by 5 integrated from 0 to 3. And 3 to the fifth is 243 divided by 5 minus 0. And so we have our moment. And the way we calculate the center of balance is we divide that moment, 243 over 5, by the 81 over 4. And we can multiply by the reciprocal. 4 over 81. And when we reduce, we get 12 fifths. 12 fifths is where this x cubed will balance perfectly between 0 and 3. This has all been in one dimension, though. So let's make this a little more interesting in two dimensions. We'll again first look at the discrete case to set up the continuous case. With the discrete case, now we're not just talking about points on the x-axis. We're talking about points in general. Again, we'll start by calculating the mass, which is the sum of all of the m's. And again, we'll calculate the moments away from the y-axis, which is the sum of the masses times the x-coordinates. And then we'll also calculate the moments away from the x-axis, the other direction, which is the sum of the moments times the y-coordinates. 
Once we have those, we can calculate x bar, which is the y moment divided by the mass, and y bar, which is the x moment divided by the mass. And that will give us our center point that we're looking for of x bar comma y bar. So in two dimensions, we just kind of extend that same formula, considering both the x and y coordinates to get our formulas. So let's try if I took a single mass of 5 kilograms and I put it at the point negative 2, negative 3. And I took a second mass of 3 kilograms and I put it at the point positive 2, positive 3. And I took a third mass of 2 kilograms and I put it at the point negative 3, negative 2. Where would the center of balance be for these three masses? Well, first, we need to know the total mass. 5 plus 3 plus 2 equals 10 kilograms for the total mass. Next, we'll find the moment in the y direction, which is the x-coordinate, the mass times the x-coordinate. So we'll start with the first mass was 5 times its x-coordinate of negative 2, plus 3 times its x-coordinate of 2, plus 2 times its x-coordinate of negative 3. And that gives us negative 10 plus 6 minus 6. That's negative 10. We also need to find the moment in the x direction where we multiply by the y coordinate. So the first mass of 5 times its y coordinate of negative 3, plus 3 times 3, plus 2 times negative 2. That's negative 15 plus 9 minus 4 is also negative 10. Interesting that it's the same. So then to find our x bar, we'll use the m sub y. I'm going to label that. We can use that one to get the x bar because they're both the same number. I don't want to lose which one we used. Negative 10 divided by the mass of 10 gives us negative 1. y bar, we use the second one, which came from the moment of x. Negative 10 divided by 10 equals negative 1. So this time, our center that we're looking for is at the point negative 1, comma, negative 1. The continuous version of this then, as you might expect, just alters the formula slightly. And with continuous functions, if we're finding the center of balance or the center of mass, we call it a lamina. And here we're going to talk about laminas that go to the, to the x-axis. If they don't go to the x-axis, it's a little different. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So first, we have to calculate our mass. As you might expect, we have to add up all the individual masses. That's just an integral from a to b of the function that represents the masses dx. Then we'll find the m sub y, which again, as you might expect, similar to the last continuous case, is x times f of x dx. But when we find the moments from the x-axis, this one's quite different. The integral from a to b of, and we actually take our function squared divided by 2 dx. It's a little different than you might expect. It comes from having to solve for the other variable. But we're not going to get into the derivation right now. 
Once we find those two moments, we can then find x bar again by taking my divided by m. And we can find y bar by taking mx divided by m. And so again, our center is x bar comma y bar. So this is the continuous version of our formulas. So let's see if we can solve a continuous case. Let's say we've got a function that is bounded above, or a region that's bounded above, by f of x equals x squared and below by the x-axis. on 0 to 2. We want to find its center of mass. Just to get a visual idea of what we're looking at, this function starts at 0, goes to 1, 1, goes to 2, 4. Bounded from 0 to 2. So we have this kind of a triangle. It's got a curved left side to it. We want to see where is that shape going to balance. We're going to find the exact point. To do that, first we need the total mass, which is the integral from 0 to 2 of our function x squared dx, which we know is x cubed over 3 integrated from 0 to 2. And 2 cubed is 8 thirds minus 0. So we just have 8 thirds. Then we need the moment of y, which is the integral from 0 to 2 of x times our function, which is x squared, dx, or the integral from 0 to 2 of x cubed, dx, which gives us x to the fourth over 4, integrated from 0 to 2, 2 to the fourth power, is 16 divided by 4 is 4. To find the m sub x, this is the weird one. We're going to integrate from 0 to 2 of our function squared divided by 2, which gives us the integral from 0 to 2 of x to the fourth divided by 2 dx which is x to the fifth divided by 5 times 2, or 10, integrated from 0 to 2. 2 to the fifth is 32. So we have 32 over 10, which reduces to 16 fifths. Now we're ready to find x bar and y bar. x bar is the moment from y, which is 4 divided by the 8 thirds, or 4 times the reciprocal of 3 eighths gives us 3 halves. For the y's, we'll take the 16 fifths, and we'll divide by the mass of 8 thirds, which is equal to 16 fifths times the reciprocal 3 eighths. Reducing gives us 6 fifths. And so we found the center of balance at x equals 3 halves, y equals 6 fifths. So 3 halves and 6 fifths. It's going to be somewhere around there on our graph. We'll perfectly balance that triangle. Now, I mentioned this is only going to work if we're bounded below by the x-axis. If we're not bounded below on the x-axis, we need a slight adjustment to our formulas. So let's look at still continuous. So we still have what's called a lamina. 
the lamina this time is between functions. Similar to how we found the area between two curves, we just need to subtract the two functions. So our mass function is still the integral from a to b, but this time we'll subtract the functions f of x minus g of x dx. For our moment function, it's in the y direction. It's still going to be the integral from a to b. And we're still going to do x times f of x. But this time, before we multiply by the x, we have to subtract g of x. So x times the difference in the functions dx. And the moments from the x from a to b, it's still going to be the function squared divided by 2. But we're going to square the functions and then subtract them. Let's move the divide by 2 out front as 1 half, just for the sake of space. And then it's going to be f of x squared minus g of x squared dx. And once you have those, you can find x bar, as always, by dividing the moment from y by the mass. Find y bar by dividing the moment from x by the mass. And these functions will help us find the center of balance, or the center of mass between two functions on an interval from a to b. So let's do one last example where we do just that. Let's say we want the space that's bounded above by f of x equals 6 minus x squared, and below by g of x equals 3 minus 2x. To kind of get a picture of what we're looking at, actually, let's move it a little more center. The above function, 6 minus x squared looks like this. And the below function, 3 minus 2x looks something like this. And so we've got this mass that we're trying to find the center of balance for. Looks like it's probably going to be around here somewhere. But that's just kind of eyeballing it. A little to the right. Maybe it's a little too high in that picture. But we want to find out where is that center of balance. So to do that, first we find the total mass. The total mass is the integral from a to b. Well, we have to find these x coordinates of where it's going to intersect. Where is this space going to start and end? You can derive that by hand by setting them equal to each other and solving. Let's do that kind of up above in this space. 6 minus x squared equals 3 minus 2x. Adding everything to the right, we get x squared minus 2x minus 3. x minus 3 times x plus 1. So x equals 3 and negative 1. So we've got negative 1 to the left. 3 to the right. So we're integrating from negative 1 to 3 of the difference in the functions. 6 minus x squared is on top, minus the 3 minus 2x. Remember, that changes both signs. Let's combine like terms before we integrate. The integral from negative 1 to 3 of 3 minus x squared plus 2x dx is going to equal 3x minus x cubed divided by 3 plus x squared integrated from negative 1 to 3, which means, I guess I don't need a parentheses, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 3 cubed is 27 divided by 3 is 9. 
plus 3 squared is 9. Minus 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3. Being careful with our signs, we've got, the we've got to subtract a negative. But then when I do the negative 1 cubed, it also becomes a negative 1 third. And then plus 1 minus 1. And when we put that all together, 9 minus 9 plus 9 plus 3 minus 1 third minus 1, we should get 32 over 3 for our total mass. All right, let's find the moment for y, which is the integral from negative 1 to 3 of x times the difference in the functions. 6 minus x squared minus the other function, which is 3 plus 2x dx. Combine like terms and distribute the x through. 6 minus 3 is 3 times x is 3x minus x squared times x is x cubed plus 2x times x is 2x squared. Integrating, we have 3x squared divided by 2 minus x to the fourth divided by 4 plus 2x cubed divided by 3 integrated from negative 1 to 3. Plugging 3 in, 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27 halves minus 3 to the fourth is 81 fourths plus 3 cubed is 27 times 3 is 54 thirds minus plugging negative 1 in we get 3 halves minus a negative is positive negative square to the fourth power is a positive 1 fourth minus, but negative 1 cubed is a negative again, positive 2 thirds. And we put that in our calculator. We'll get 32 thirds for our moment in the y direction. Now for the moment in the x direction, this one's going to be probably the most involved, going from negative 1 to 3. We have the 1 half out front times the first function squared. The top function is 6 minus x squared squared minus the second function squared, 3 minus 2x squared dx. Squaring everything gives us the integral from negative 1 to 3 of 1 half times 36 minus 12x squared plus x to the fourth. And then we're subtracting. So 3 squared is 9. Then we have 12x. It's a negative 12x, but when we subtract it, it becomes a positive 12x. And then negative 2x squared becomes a negative 4x squared dx. Which, let's pull the 1 half out, because that's a constant, from negative 1 to 3 of combining like terms. We've got an x to the fourth. We've got negative 12 minus 4 is negative 16x squared. I keep making sure we don't lose anything here. Next, we've got a 12x. And then we've also got a 36 minus 9 is a positive 27dx. So when we take the integral, we have 1 half times x to the fifth divided by 5 minus 16x cubed divided by 3 plus 12x squared divided by 2 gives us 6x squared plus 27x integrated from negative 1 to 3. So plugging 3 in, we have 1 half times 3 to the fifth is 243 out of 5. Minus 3 to the third is 27. 27 divided by 3 is 9 times 16 is 144. 
plus 3 squared is 9 times 6 is 54, plus 3 times 27 is 81. And then subtracting, being careful with signs, negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1 fifth. Subtracting negative 1 fifth makes it positive 1 fifth. Negative 1 cubed gives us negative 16 thirds with a negative in front, which is a positive 16 thirds. And when we subtract it, we get negative 16 thirds. Very careful with our signs. Negative 1 squared just gives us 6. So we subtract the 6. And then we subtract a negative 27, which is a positive 27. And if I put that all in my calculator, and tell my calculator to change that into a fraction, we get 416 out of 15 for the moment in the x direction. Lots of work, but we finally got through it. It's mainly algebra. The calculus is pretty straightforward. Now to figure out our x bar, we take the moment from the y direction, which is 32 over 3 and divide by the mass, which is also 32 over 3. So the center of balance for x is 1. For the y bar, we take the moment in the x direction of 416 out of 15. And we divide by 32 thirds, which is 416 out of 15 times the reciprocal of 3 out of 32. And I'm just going to do that on the calculator. And that's going to equal 13 fifths. So finally, we have the coordinates of our center of balance, the center of mass, at 1 comma 13 fifths. So that's how we can do it. If they're between two functions, we just have to subtract the functions, adjusting our formulas. I do want to show you one little trick that comes up sometimes. It doesn't always apply. But when it does, it's really nice. We want to use symmetry whenever possible. It can save you a lot of work. For example, if I have x plus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 4, and I were to graph that, turns out that that's going to be a circle with a radius of 2 centered at negative 3 comma 4. Let's see if I can draw a nice little circle here. And if that's a nice little circle, I know the center of the circle, because it's symmetrical about the x and y axis. The center is going to be right there at negative 3 comma 4. And we're done. We don't have to go through all the equations to find those points. Although if we did, we'd get negative 3, 4. So that's really nice and can save you time. More often, it'll give you one coordinate. You'll notice it's symmetrical around x equals 0, so x bar equals 0. And then you have to do the work to find the y bar. Or you know the y bar because it's symmetrical, and you have to seek the x bar out. But that can save you a lot of time if you catch some symmetry to your shape before you go through all the calculations, which is why I strongly suggest you always graph the function before you go through the algebra. So take a look at these on the homework assignment. Practice finding some centers of mass. And we will see you in class to discuss these centers of mass in more detail.